Hey everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben. This is episode 3 of the collection review series, and today I'm going to be talking about French ships. So here we are in the page where the English ships left off. First French ship is La Magnifique. This was actually my first Five Master that I ever got in a pack um, from Crimson Coast. The other few Five Masters I had early on were the Enterprise and then HMS Gargantuan. The Magnifique is a really cool ship because it has six cargo spaces, which is really unique for a Five Master. There's only like a couple others that have that. The broadside the attackability isn't too great, but for the point cost and the cargo and the decent guns, it's not a bad ship. The Ville de Paris is really cool. Uh, she's based on a historical ship that was like a three-decker in the Age of Sail, and therefore her guns are really good. The ability is good for defense, but the speed is pretty lacking. Not a bad gunship either. Play superb, very good guns, solid ability, good speed, good cargo. This is the best ship we've seen yet today. Very good gunship. I like this ship a lot. The Solio Royal is probably just as good, if not better. She comes in a bit cheaper. Her guns are not quite as effective, but quite good. Uh, the speed is a little bit less. Cargo is really good, and an amazing ability uh, to eliminate crew. So these are some of France's best gunships here that we've already seen. The Galet. Uh, also, I don't speak French at all, so if I might be screwing up pronunciations, but maybe I'll just stop those. This ship is pretty good. The ability basically makes her guns all three L's. It's not ex an exceptional gunship compared to some of the ones we've already seen. It's kind of a, a little bit more boring, but it's still a pretty solid option that the French have. So we continue the next page. This one is pretty good as well. This is one of the better uh, gunships from Davy Jones's Curse, which is the sixth set that was released. The ability is decent. Uh, the guns are pretty good. Uh, pretty good short range uh, gunship. This one is very similar to the Gale, but just costs a little bit more for less speed. So the Gale would be a better ship to use pretty much every time, unless you know you're going French because the abilities have a slight text difference. This one is really interesting. This is one of my favorite gunships the French have. She's pretty expensive for just three cargo spaces, and part of that is the reverse captain ability, which isn't that great, but her speed and guns are really good. So if you use her with extra actions in a smoke pot specialist or something similar, you could actually do a pretty interesting combo by moving, uh, shooting, and then shooting some smoke out, a fog bank, and then using the reverse captain ability with an extra action. It does not chain with the captain ability, but you can use an extra action to then move into the fog bank, which would allow you to shoot again. So that would be an interesting combo to use. The Neptune is not too exceptional, but pretty effective, solid gun, kind of similar to this one, just less cargo and less speed. And then her sister ship from the same set uh, is pretty similar, same speed, same cargo, same point cost, but a different, uh, different strengths. Neptune is good with boarding, short range cannon, so she's like a short range brawler, or a close range brawler. And then the Monet is much more similar to the Superb. So she has long range guns with that ability, which works better, much better with long range guns. And then here we get into the Four Masters. This one is pretty good. She's one of my oldest ships. I had two copies out of my original first 49 ships. Very similar to another ship we'll see. All right, so to continue with Ol' Hercule, this ship is pretty good. Uh, not for the point cost, that's for sure, but Ignoring the point cost has a good ability, good guns, good speed. The cost makes it almost un unplayable in a 40 point game, especially considering some of the better options, but this ship sees uh, more action and usage in huge campaign games and larger games above the 40 point standard build total. This one, the ship isn't too good. I find her boring. Everything about her is boring except for the ability. The French already have a pretty good selection of named crew, so you, don't, you usually don't need to use that ability too much with the French. And we'll see a similar ship soon, I think. This ship is pretty good. She has a nice link to a, uh, an S Explorer, which means you can explore islands within S of the ship. Uh, the speed works well with that ability. 
but regardless of the length she has decent guns not great but a solid ability the reroll ability is really useful in a lot of different situations La Corse this ship is really fantastic that's arguably the best defensive ability in the game or one of the best everything else is pretty average but that ability makes her extremely difficult to deal with and to take down some of the counters for it are canceling it and of course and also fire pot specialists and fire shot some kind of fire would go right through it along with the broadside attack ability but that's more costly and uh, not as reliable yeah the ship this is the one that's similar to La Scipion decent ability but the French don't really need it even slower and the guns are a little better but not a lot of reason to use that ship especially when you have ones like this this one is similar to the geography same ability same cannons but a little bit slower for one less point the T-Pent is a pretty cool ship this is one of France's more unique ships they don't have many ships or crew with the eternal keyword this might be the only one actually so that makes her unique right off the bat everything else is pretty average but if you put a captain helmsman one of their cancelers and then an oarsman aboard you can have a pretty tough ship to take down there's two vor versions of the Royal Lewis this one I like the first one a lot better this is from the Rise of the Fiend set the parley keyword is pretty rare it's also can be very good on a gold runner or on a gunship this is I've used this ship more as a gold runner but with the reasonable cannons not great but reasonable cannons and slow speed you could use her as some kind of gunship too or maybe a hybrid with like a captain and helmsman and setup the section second version of the royal lewis is much more boring just boring stats and whatnot all around and then the broadside attack keyword is usually a waste of points and i wouldn't recommend using it very often especially on larger ships and when the the guns are rank three or worse you have a 50 percent chance of hitting but if you miss all your all your guns are used up on one die roll this ship is pretty interesting it's one of the more unique ships interesting cannons all L range which is nice and then they can't be eliminated due to the ability similar to the Hercule this one is not one of my favorite ships but it's definitely unique the name is unique La Vengeance this is one of the best ships from Revolution very good speed good cannons great cargo all for solid point cost good against the English especially I usually use this ship as kind of like a hybrid often people use it as a gunship but you could use it as a pure gold runner too Captain Explorer would do really well and maybe a Helmsman too if you wanted the option of more speed the Leon is a pretty good ship I think she's underrated due to the vengeance the vengeance is pretty popular and most a lot of people know how good it is this one is kind of flies under the radar due to the popularity of her sister ship this one is actually really good too she's not quite as good she costs more for less speed and worse cannons but she has a more uh, versatile ability and the same cargo so she could be a pretty good ship in her own right usually probably as a hybrid or maybe a ship that you would raid other gold runners with so you would raid them to try to steal their gold this ship is very similar to a ship we saw on the last page it's basically the same ship it's just that this one is a schooner everything else is the same both are pretty solid options for gunships the Pluton this ship is really cool this is kind of a personal favorite of mine I always try to think of crew combos because the French have a lot of good boarding and extra action crew but I still haven't come up with like a setup that I think is perfect for the ship She'd be great if she had a little bit more speed or like one more cargo space. I've tried to use her uh, to steal all the gold from enemy ships using the S-board ability, but the speed and the cargo leave a, a tiny bit to be desired. The guns and the point costs all, also make her somewhat uh, tough to use in smaller games. So not the, not the best option, but definitely an interesting ship. This is one of my least favorite ships in the entire game, probably in my it might be my least favorite ship ever the ability probably should never have existed it definitely should never have been put on a ship this large because it makes it pretty much overpowered and extremely annoying to deal with this ship was one of the biggest reasons at least i think so along with the nubian prince probably that the reverse pinning rule was uh abandoned the schooner keyword means you can turn uh 
any amount on your stern. But this led people to turning to try to pin enemy ships with the schooner keyword, which is now illegal, because then you would be able to activate the ability and the enemy ship wouldn't be able to move away, which was a really overpowered combo. Even without that being possible, this ship is still really obnoxious and possibly my least favorite ship in the entire game. This one is pretty boring. Nothing really stands out except for the secondary ability, which is a really nice ability. It makes her a bit more of a gunship along with the cargo. France has better options. I mean, you saw the Vengeance is far better as a gunship, but this one's not a bad option, especially if you beef up her cannons, maybe like a fire pot specialist or a musketeer or some kind of world hater ability to give plus one to your gun rolls. The Mary Antoinette, I like the blue tone better because of the better cargo and more interesting cannons. This ship is also uh, not too, nothing really stands out except for the ability, which is decent for uh, raiding enemy gold runners or maybe trying to eliminate crew from enemy ships by boarding them more often. This is the second version of the Bonaparte. This one is far more boring, but at least she's not overpowered. This is what I would call one of the more boring ships. Due to the cargo, speed, guns, point cost, everything is pretty standard, pretty average. And the ability is not really anything to get too excited about. This ship is pretty interesting. Here's the s board ability again, so we've seen it three times just on this page alone with those two ships and now the St. Dennis. Good speed, very good speed. The cannons are kind of strange and not very accurate, but that's pretty typical for galleys. She's kind of expensive for what you get, but in a niche role as like a border or even kind of like a hybrid gold runner that can defeat or scare away enemy gold runners, she could shine in more of a niche role. The Saber is one of the best switchblades in the game. So here's the Saber. Switchblades are generally overpriced for what you get. This ship's not really an exception, but I think it's a really cool switchblade between the cannons, uh, the ability, and how the high point cost lets you fit a lot of crazy crew on this ship. Like I said before, the French have a lot of cool extra action and boarding oriented crew. So if you use some of those on this ship, she can really shine. Also, a specific combo is Captain Nemo from the Mysterious Islands set. He lets you steal enemy crew and then they can use their abilities on the Saber. So if you combine that with like a Sack Captain that lets you sacrifice crew for extra, uh, extra actions, the Saber can do some really interesting stuff. Bombardiers are also very costly for what you get. These two come in at 7 points per mast, 21 points for a 3 masted ship which is a, usually a terrible deal. But the, this one actually has the extra action ability built in, which is really good, and then it has good cannons and good speed. So I wouldn't recommend it in smaller games, but in larger games, if you can afford it, this can be a pretty fun ship to run out. This one, on the other hand, is total garbage in comparison. Worse guns, worse speed, and a f far worse ability for the same point cost. So I have no idea what WizKids was thinking with this. This ship should probably cost maybe 16 or 17 points in comparison to the other bombardiers that exist. And since French, the French have this one, the Grand Vanquer is almost totally useless unless you're playing in a bigger game and you want to use both. Icebreakers usually don't factor into the game very much. A lot of people don't use icebergs. And even when they are used, Unless you string them together or use a lot of them, you're not usually going to need an icebreaker. This one's a pretty good one though. Decent cargo and guns. This is one of my favorite French ships. It has good speed, great ability, very good cannons, and solid amount of cargo. This is what I call like a stacked ship. So it has, like all the stats are good and the ability is good. That's what I call a stacked ship. This one is the opposite. Just boring cannons and speed. Not a very good ability. Not worth using for the most part. This ship is pretty interesting. Low cargo, but between the speed and the ability, she fits a niche role as like a submarine hunter, which is useful if you're playing a lot of mysterious islands or if your opponent likes submarines a lot. The guns could use a bit of improvement, so if you combine that ability with a fire pot specialist or maybe a world hater, which I'll which we'll see in the French crew video, the next episode of this series. 
she can be pretty good as a sub hunter. Alaspadone, very good. This ship is also good against submarines because of the boarding ability. She gets plus two. But the key is the guns and the speed, which make her a pretty good gunship, regardless of the ability in cargo space. So a better ship than the Rocher Noir, but more more of a general purpose gunship than a sub hunter. This is one of my older ships. I have a bunch of these. Not a great ship, but a decent uh, support gunship. The cargo holds her back a bit, and the ability drives her point cost up to the point where there's other French ships that are far better at being a gunship, but not a terrible option. This is a good example of a better option. So the same, same speed and same guns, but far less points because uh, the ship isn't wasting points on broadsides attack. The Aqualon, I haven't really used this one much, but I've been meaning to. I always forget about this ship. She has nice guns, decent speed, and a solid ability. The cargo makes her pretty much a gunship no matter what. She doesn't really have enough cargo space to be used for gold at all, but not a bad little gunship, or medium-sized gunship. This one is similar, same ability, similar speed and guns. This ship is decent, kind of generic all around. Um, this ship is pretty good. This one is more interesting. Very good speed. She has a specific ability that's kind of hard to take advantage of because it's so situational. But between that and then she has average guns for the last two, but the first one is a 2L, so it's kind of an interesting cannon arrangement. A little bit out of the ordinary and pretty good cargo space. This ship is kind of interesting as a home island raider. She has also kind of an interesting cannon arrangement with a 2L in the middle, and then the other guns aren't very good though. Decent speed and cargo space. These, that's like the four, the quartz hat of uh, French Three Masters from Crimson Coast, which is the set where the French were introduced in. This is the other version of the Corsay. Uh, this one is not nearly as good as the version that came out in the set right after Davy Jones' Curse. That was the ship that has that amazing defensive ability. This one has the reverse captain ability, which is almost never worth the points. And you can't, like I said, you can't chain it with the captain ability. This is one of my favorite French ships, actually. She's pretty underrated. She has a very rare ship because the, she has the same action twice ability built in, which is very uncommon, but also very good. I would use this ship usually as like a hybrid. So the guns aren't that great, but because of the ability and the uh, potential for maybe a reroller to come aboard, you could use a captain and a helmsman and still have a little bit of space left for gold. Kind of a, not a very typical option that people would use, but definitely an underrated ship. This is one of my favorite French ships. Very good ability that helps her in her hybrid role. The ability complements the cargo space and the speed really well. And our guns are almost perfect. So this is this is another example of like a stacked ship. So pretty much all the stats are good and the ability is good as well. So you get a really good package. I would use this ship usually as a hybrid with the option of stealing gold from enemy gold runners. So she's good at everything because her guns are good. She, could, she has the space to get gold and then she has an ability and cargo space to help her steal gold from the enemies. So next page. This, on the other hand, is just a purpose-built gunship. The ability makes her guns pretty much perfect. They would make them effectively 1S, 1L, 1S against non-French ships. And then the speed and the cargo space gives you enough options uh, to put some good crew aboard and make her ready to go to war. This is the exact example of what I call like an extremely boring ship. So 10 points for a 3 master, same amount of cargo as mass, L speed, which is average, average cannons, all rank 3, 2 of them mass, 1 of them L, the L in the middle, as usual, and then a really boring ability, similar to plus 1 to boarding rolls, just not that great, and kind of not worth the points. So you can kind of tell that I don't like ships like that for the most part. I like using ships that are more interesting, which most of them are, but sometimes you get like the really boring ones. This ship is interesting. This has a misprint. It's supposed to say three masts instead of two. She has good cannons. 
One of the best things about this ship is just the pure point cost. So that's a pretty cheap ability, but because of her guns and the cheap point cost, she can be a good support gun ship. The Montreal is pretty cool. She has the S4 ability like we saw on some of those four masters earlier. Pretty good speed and cannon, so not a bad support gunship as well. And then this ship, this is a boring ship outside of the ability, which makes her a little bit more interesting. So similar to the Rocher Noir, she's good at uh, against one specific thing. In this case, she's really good against forts. This is one of my favorite French ships, as I've been saying that like about once per page now. The French are one of my favorite factions. The English are my favorite, but. The French have grown on me the past few years especially, so they're one of my favorites at this point. This ship is definitely a reason why. Great speed and cargo. Her guns are not great, but they're solid. She can be a decent hybrid ship. The ability of this ship cannot be pinned, combined with the schooner keyword, both of those abilities help her to steal gold from enemy ships, so she could be a hybrid ship, kind of similar to a ship on the previous page. The ship is a home island raider. She has that ability. The guns are pretty good though, so she could be a support gun ship. She's probably better off without the ability, unless she had more cargo space, because once you put a Captain Helmsman aboard, you only have one spot left for gold, if you're trying to steal gold. But then without that ability, she might only cost about eight points. This is a ship I have not used very often. I think I used her once a long time ago, back in 2011. But the, Ability is really specific. This ability would be better to have against forts, but this ship is decent for the point cost. You get a solid set of cannons and a decent uh, amount of cargo. So, an okay support gunship. This is one of the better gunships the French have. Great cargo speed, solid guns, but the ability is key, so you can eliminate cargo with every single hit. So, unlike the crew killing ability, which is only once per turn, this eliminates cargo for every single hit. So if you hit with all three cannons, you can eliminate up to three cargo, which could be, you know, two crew and one treasure or any combination of, of cargo. This is one of the weirdest French ships. It has the ghost ship keyword, which is usually only on ships of the pirate or the cursed factions. Good speed, but it's really tough to figure out what to do with her because she doesn't have the cargo to be a gold runner but she also doesn't have the cannons to be a gunship. And she's wicked expensive because the ghost ship keyword costs a lot, even more than it should have probably. So it's not a very usable ship, but probably one of the most unique ships the French have. This is a decent gunship because of the speed and the cannons. Once again, the reverse captain ability makes her point cost kind of prohibitive for use in smaller games. If she didn't have that ability, she'd cost like 10 or 11 points, which would be a much better deal. Here's another 9.3 uh, master. This one is a little bit more geared towards treasure, but the speed holds her back a bit. This is one of the better French uh, gunships, actually. The cargo space is really strange. It's only one, which is very rare for a ship with like two or more masts to have only one cargo space. But due to the great speed, you only need one cargo space because you just put a captain aboard, which is just about the only thing you should do with this ship because she's not going to get any gold either way. And then you have good, decent cannons and then a really good uh, reroll ability that helps the cannons out or maybe helps with a boarding party, something like that. This is also one of the best French ships to tow a flotilla with since when you tow flotillas, the base move isn't reduced like when you're towing a derelict. So the bond chance can move three S's uh, even when she's towing a flotilla. So that would give you about seven cannons. Well, I shouldn't say about, but with the reroll, you could have up to eight shots, technically. So pretty good offensive combo. The Bonifacio, not super noteworthy. Uh, the ability is pretty rare to see in the French faction, but other than that, the ship doesn't stand out very much. Once again, low cargo, which hurts this ship more so than the Bond Chance, because she really needs a captain and a helmsman, which gives you no extra cargo spaces for any other crew. This is actually a decent support gunship. I've never really heard people talk about this ship or use her, but there's a lot of ships from Crimson Coast and Revolution, the second and third si ships, uh, the second and third sets, sorry, that fly under the radar. So this is one of them. 
pretty much great stats all around. It costs a little bit more than you would want to pay for a two mass support gunship, but the ability helps out a little bit. This is one of the better uh, French gold runners in the game. She's been used a ton. I've used her a bunch. She's used in a lot of different competitive fleets, and you can see why. A very cheap point cost for great speed and good cargo, and even the guns are decent. This is a great example of why negative abilities actually help ships out a ton. So English ships get plus one of their cannon rolls against this ship, which is bad, but the odds of your opponent playing the English uh, is generally low, or not really low, but unless you know that your opponent plays English a lot, like I like to, the ability doesn't really hurt her that much, and it just drives her point cost down. This is a good gold runner as well, actually. This is one of my original French ships. Just hook up a explorer to this ship, and she can have three car spaces left for a pretty solid gold runner. The bayonet. This is an interesting little ship. The cannons are total opposites, really good and then pretty bad. But due to the ability, she can make for a decent little, uh, kind of like a hybrid almost. If you put a Captain Helmsman on, you could have decent guns and a solid defensive ability that helps her. The smaller the ship is, the better this ability becomes because they're more vulnerable to ramming with the less mass they have. And also the cargo space gives you just enough to maybe run a little gold but still have some fighting crew aboard. The ship has the, an ability to let pirate crew come aboard, but due to the low cost and the, the fact that the French already have a, a lot of good crew, there's not a very high usage of her. She could be okay as a support gunship, but still better options. The Martinique has very good cannons and decent cargo space. Another little support gunship, not really too noteworthy, not bad either. This is a pretty unique ship. This is a good one for the French. This one is kind of overlooked in favor of some of their other smaller ships that we'll see soon. But this one is pretty good. It's only three points. Once again, a negative ability, but if you're filling up the cargo space, you're probably gonna have a helmsman aboard to, to get gold. So she could go out at LS, grab two coins, and then come home at S plus S speed, all for just five points. So not a bad little option. The ship, I don't like this ability because it's tough to use. It's almost similar in a way, but so she might, if she was a gold runner, she would go out at LS, come back at just L, which is too slow for a gold runner in most cases. But then if you use her as a gunship, there's better options. And then you're not using the ability at all, which costs points to use, even if it's a cheap ability. This ship has the same ability as the Bonaparte that we saw earlier but it's less annoying because you can ram it to dismast it more easily and it's not as powerful offensively and not as uh, fast. This ship isn't really good at anything specifically because her guns don't really let her use that ability that great and she doesn't have the cargo space to be a gold runner. The Dijon is pretty good. This is a good example of the total opposite. So the, the speed, the ability, and the cargo all fit together pretty well for a typical gold runner. The ship is a okay support gunship, good speed, and this ability usually isn't that great. Again, it's like a faction hater ability, but since the pirates are the best faction in the game, they have the most ships and a lot of people like to play the pirates, it's actually a pretty good ability. Compared to, you know, plus one against like the Vikings or plus one against the Americans even isn't isn't quite as useful. The Sabre is kind of expensive for what you get, but a decent sport gunship, good cannons and ability and decent cargo. The Mercury, this is one of my older ships. Great speed, great guns. Again, a little bit expensive for what you're going to get. What you could do, I think I've seen it in one of my fleets that I've used is a captain and then a fire pot specialist because you don't really need a helmsman because the speed is already top notch but with a fire pot specialist then you're not reducing any L range guns to S range and then you can set enemy ships on fire with the accurate cannons. This ship is kind of weird it has an interesting ability it makes your guns better but the cost is kind of prohibitive when you can get 
um, some of their big five masters only cost a few more points than this. This ship once again has that same ability as the ship we just saw earlier. This one is a little better because it has better cargo, but it's also more expensive. Here's the opposite of um, this defensive ability. Outrange cannons can't hit this ship. It's a really good defensive ability, which makes this ship pretty good actually. She could run gold or maybe be uh, some kind of support gunship. This ship isn't too bad. If you have a Captain Helmsman aboard, you'll have two S guns, but once again, kind of expensive for what you get. This is one of the better French ships from the early sets. Very good speed, good cargo, and a nice defensive ability that helps her out, and pretty good cannon. So this one is kind of stacked, at least. This is a rare two master that's good at almost anything she does, because she has enough cargo to get gold, but then she has the guns and defensive ability to be a solid little gunship as well, which gives you the idea of maybe using her in a hybrid role where she could possibly do both in the same game. This is one of the most unique ships in the game, not just for the French faction, because it's the only ship in the game with this ability. This ship cannot sink, but she can be scuttled, which if you use this on a bigger gunship uh, via Davy Jones using like the copy ability, it can be uh, potentially pretty powerful. On a two master with only S speed, it's not very, uh, not very useful, but it's kind of like a really slow, like brutal gunship so it's got a really good defensive ability and good cannons but it's going to take a while to get to the battlefield to do any damage. The Mont Blanc, this ship has a really good ability but she doesn't really have the firepower to take full advantage of it and the point, uh, the ability is really expensive so it drives the front cost up to the point of not being one of the better options. This is the total opposite of the previous ship, a sister ship from the same set, South China Seas. This ship is often overlooked because she has another version from Ocean's Edge that we'll see soon that you very well might know about. This ship has a great ability, the sniping ability. It's really fun to use. It's maybe not one of the most practical abilities, but it's really fun. So the cannons are really good at L range, but then if your opponent's uh, out of range, you could snipe at them. It comes at a very good point cost, so with a Captain Helmsman, you'd be moving LS with one cargo space still open, and two very good cannons which can double their range if you need it. This is one of my older French ships. This one's pretty good as well. A defensive ability that helps her out because she's a small ship and could really use that ability. Good guns, good speed, solid point costs. And, and this, both of these are overlooked. I think these should get a little bit more consideration as potential French support gunships. The Versailles, uh, similar to the Mont Blanc, she has a good ability, but it's way better on larger ships. So the cannons can't be eliminated if derelict she cannot shoot, but that's only going to be useful if she has an oarsman and is, and is derelict or has one mass left. So the ability doesn't really help her out due to her size, and then it also, similar to the Mont Blanc, almost the same ship really. It just drives your point cost way up. The Belois, uh, this one is looks basically identical to the Saber. It's pretty much the same, just a slightly different ship type. The Blockade Runner versus a two mass square rig ship. Now this is an example of the reverse power creep. So just about one set later, you have a ship that's the same except one of her guns is worse and there's one less cargo space. So as the sets went on, the quality of the ships generally declined. It was a slow power creep, but it was pretty evident as the sets went on. The Karkaju is not a bad ship, but not very good either. She's pretty expensive for what you get. She'd be good with maybe four cargo spaces or maybe a whole nother S, like three S speed, but as is, she's not really worth using too much. Okay, so now we're into the French One Masters, which they have a lot of good ones. This is what I call the French trio of super runners. This is something I came up with. So these three, one of them is from Crimson Coast, and then these two are from Revolution. The best one is the Bone Marine. She's probably the most perfect gold runner in the game. Not the best, but the most perfect, because she doesn't need any crew to be really effective. Great cargo, great speed, great ability, all for a cheap point cost. 
in reality you probably should have had maybe three cargo or less speed but a really great uh, gold runner this one's quite good too even faster but at the cost of uh, costing more than either of these other two I'd recommend a, an Explorer on her the PK is the cheapest of the three has actually an offensive ability and a good cannon so this is kind of an interesting ship to use in an offensive capacity but I usually just send her out empty without any crew to use her as a pretty good gold runner and then those are the three good one masters from those two sets the French got and they got another one in Crimson Coast which is one of their worst ships ever terrible speed uh, the ability doesn't help her because you can just ram the mast off uh, the gun is average the speed just totally kills her especially compared to her competition which we just saw was fantastic really good speed and great gold runners overall the Argus here's an ability that we just saw earlier on a couple other ships the problem this one is you can just ram the mast off so defensive abilities other than obviously ramming can eliminate the ship's masts other defensive abilities don't really work too well on one masters because you can just ram the mast off so if it has a defensive ability ramming usually can uh, kind of disable the ship without having to deal with the ability other than that it's actually a pretty good ship but expensive the Rosha Fort is underrated I think this ship should get a little bit more usage the ability is pretty good you can see opponents crew that are face down and Possibly more importantly, you can check out their gold to try to see what you might want to steal. Or if you have tricks up your sleeve to try to eliminate gold. And it's not just the ability. The ship is decent. Obviously, the PK is much faster, but the ship could be a little gold runner. Slow, but pretty cheap and has decent cargo. Alright, so you might be wondering why this ship is so expensive. The ability is pretty much the only reason. WizKids overcosted this ability. It's it's just ridiculous. And they also put it almost exclusively on one masters. So as we'll see uh, in a couple other videos in this series, you'll see similar ships that are just awful because of the ability. It's hard to even know what to do with these ships. And it makes them arguably the most like unusable ships in the entire game. The Marianne is quite good. Similar to the Rochefort, she has that same ability, but she has a better cannon, but less cargo space. Once again, another dirt cheap option, a good one for the French. All right, so this is the other version of the core. We saw that version, which I think is underrated mostly because of this version that exists. This is one of their best gold runners. She has more cargo space than she costs points, which is very unique. And Decent speed and a very good cannon. Just a good ship for the French overall, or a great ship really. Similar to the Rochefort, this one has the same point cost and speed and cargo space. She's a little bit better at getting gold, but other than that, another solid option. Get another one that costs five points. This one has a really good defense ability, but surprisingly, she's not overcosted for it. So this can be a decent little uh, harasser, a little bit of a support gunship. The St. Joan has a good defense ability as well. Great speed and good cargo space. Pretty good little gold runner. The Triumphant. This one is pretty terrible. The reverse captain ability is overpriced to begin with, and then you put it on a ship that has almost no combat capability whatsoever because it only has one cannon, and you have a great recipe for a terrible ship. The Belle Pool is the total opposite, very good gold runner. Similar to the Bone Marine, has the explorability built in, so you just put a helmsman on her and send her out. The Floating Stone is decent. Turtle ships can be kind of weird. They're kind of they're kind of good for one masters, because you'll see that their point costs aren't really that much higher than most one masters. The turtle ship keyword is pretty cheap. Um, at least it seems like it is. This one has a good cannon and a decent ability but the point cost makes her pretty usable even if she's not great in the stats department the Mont Blanc is the French flotilla the other most of the other factions got a couple flotillas on uh, the later sets the French only got one but th this one is pretty good flotillas like I 
I think I said in the English Crew video, they're one of the best offensive tools in the game, and they're definitely underrated. So the extended range keyword gives you pretty good firepower. So you got four cannons shooting at S plus S range for just nine points. Decent accuracy. And then an ability that's pretty uncommon and people, I don't really seek it out and I don't think other players seek out this ability for usage, but it can be uh, pretty useful depending on what ship you're facing. If you need to take out like a, the 2 well gun that the opponent, opposing ship still has standing, something like that. And then finally, the French Sea Monster, which is not very good. <laughs> a Vera keyword is overpriced. Uh, the ability is pretty unique. It's kind of like that slingshot boost, the plus L ability that uh, we'll see on some Cursed Crew in a while from now in this series. But other than that, it's kind of an interesting Sea Monster because it essentially has three abilities. The guns are kind of strange, but overall, not a very good deal for your points. And that concludes episode three of the collection review series. This was French Ships. Next I'll be doing French Crew. So long for now.